Hi everyone, my name is Julie Sebi. I write the Analytics Corner blog that focuses on data engineering, analytics, and visualization with Alteryx and Spotfire. You can find my site at the URL shown on the screen. I don't know about your part of the world, but Northwest Montana is pretty dang hot right about now. Whitefish is only hot for about one month out of the year, so we don't have air conditioning. So today's video is brought to you in uh, tank top and yoga attire. But I hope you're staying cool wherever you're at. This week I built my first app, and I, and I also learned how to debug apps. And so the things I learned this week will be the subject of several blog posts. And in this video, I'm going to explain how to build Alteryx apps with pre-populated dropdowns. Now, when I was trying to figure this out on my own, I was hoping to find some simple tutorials. And instead, what I found was uh, either really old videos, really long videos, or troubleshooting, which wasn't terribly helpful. And so what I'm going to try to do in this video is give you a short, simple, easy to follow, how-to tutorial on how to set up apps with pre-populated dropdowns. Now, the purpose of my app is to allow a user to choose an operator and then query data for that operator. They only need to choose one operator at a time, hence usage of a dropdown, as opposed to some other type of input. To create the app, I needed the following tools. The cross tab you see here, a dynamic rename, a dropdown tool, a action tool and a filter tool and you'll see that I have two action tools here and that's because I'm using this drop down in more than one place in the workflow so you can use one drop down in multiple places you just have to add more action tools to specify what to do with that value the first thing that you need to do to make this work is to add a filter where you want the drop down value to be inserted and so you can see here that I have a filter that says data trade equals operator one, and my app is gonna replace the operator one string with the value that the user chooses. And really, it doesn't matter what string value you put in this filter because it's going to be replaced, so it's somewhat irrelevant. The next thing that we need to do is create a list of unique values that get fed into the dropdown. And that's what this cross tab tool does here. To me, this was counterintuitive. I would have expected to generate a list of unique values in a column and then tell Alteryx to use that column. Instead, what happens is the cross tab creates column headers and then the column headers are fed in as the unique values for the dropdown. So here's an example of my workflow and my data set before the cross tab. And so you can see that I have wells, uh, an operator name and then production date. For my cross tab configuration, I configure it to take the data trade as the column headers and I'm aggregating my oil value with a sum. Now, I'm not going to actually use these values, so what you put in here doesn't actually matter. It's the column headers that matter. And this is what gets fed into the drop down. Now, I'm sure you know that the cross tab tool is going to take any spaces or special characters and replace them with underscores. And that's where this dynamic rename tool comes into play. I tell it to take all of my column headers, including any unknowns in case this changes, and then to replace the underscore with a space. Next, I add in the dropdown tool itself. Because I connect it to another tool, the configuration defaults to fields from connected tool. If I didn't have this connection, then you would see many more options in this dropdown. But once it's connected, now it knows what it's doing with this. So all you have to do here is enter in some text, and this is what your user is going to see in the app itself. If you want to, you can uncheck some of the field types or data types that you're not using. I just leave them all checked. Now we add in our action tool, and within my action tool, I'm going to modify the expression data trade equals operator one, and specifically I'm going to swap out operator one with whatever the user chooses from the dropdown. Now I just want to note here that when I first configured this action tool, I had a little bit of trouble finding the right option. Expression dash value wasn't an option when I was first working with the action tool, and that has to do with the filter that I'm using you'll find that the options presented to you in the action tool change whether you're using a custom filter or a basic filter. 
And so I found this way the easiest way to go with, so I just put in a simple custom filter, even though I could have done the same with a basic filter. Now let's open up the interface designer to configure what the users are going to see. The interface designer isn't open by default, and so you'll need to come into the view menu and select it and open it up. The layout view shows what your user is going to see. In this particular use case, we're not doing very much because there's only one input. However, if I had multiple inputs, such as another dropdown or checkbox or radio button, I could reorder them using these arrows. And I want to configure what the user will see upon successful completion of the app. So we don't need to do anything with data cleansing, so I'll just uncheck all of these. But I will check output data because I do want to show these results to the users, and you may even want to configure a custom output message so that they understand that the app ran successfully. So I'll type that in. And now we can test our app, and you test an app by running it as an analytic app using the little wizard button directly next to the run button. And running it as an app brings up the prompts that your users will see as opposed to just hitting run and pushing all of the data through the workflow. So if I click it and I select an operator and click finish, you'll see great success, that's my message. And in this case it says there were no output files because I have closed the containers that are creating all the outputs just for the purpose of demonstration. And so that's how you can build a Alteryx analytic app with a pre-configured dropdown. Thanks so much. If you enjoyed the content, please subscribe and share. Every little subscriber helps. Thank you so much.